Welcome back everybody to our executive functioning enhancement series where we're going to be reviewing today how sleep and rest are major hacks to enhance executive functioning. So first let's talk about sleep. So sleep has been shown in multiple, multiple studies to have an impact on your biological functions, right? This is when your body regenerates. It's also having a major impact on your emotions because uh, basically you're releasing stress um, and you're making sense of what happened to you during the day, during your sleep. And also it enhances executive functioning, the cognitive ability, um, basically, you know, memory, um, and then regulation, like, you know, self-regulation. So a wonderful, wonderful thing. And just a simple thing, right? It's a basic need and which I think we bypass and we just really don't understand the power of a good night's sleep, um, especially for our kiddos. And I know sometimes we can feel so tired and we're not doing like half the things we used to do before, but we're still exhausted. And why is that, right? So, um, and by the way, the study I'm quoting, and I'll put the link in the, in the video, the study I'm quoting is actually showing um, two standard deviations, difference between the control group who gets some sleep and the group who's sleep deprived and partially or completely sleep deprived. So it's definitely one thing to consider during this time to go back to our self-care and make sure we get the recommended amount of sleep. I'm talking about you, I'm talking about your child, and I know if you have a gifted child, you may have noticed that your child needs less sleep than the recommended amount of, of sleep. But thinking about it, yes, their brains are more efficient, which means they need less sleep, but still, we can notice, you know, the dark circles under their eyes or the irritability or the, constant yawning, emotional unavailability, all those are signs of sleep deprivation. And so we can address, and I don't know if you've heard the, the expression, hyper brain, hyper body. So as you know, there are over excitabilities linked to um, giftedness. And one of those is psychological over excitability. So that mind, that psyche, that's constantly on, working all the time, thinking all the time. It could really self absorb for hours. And you know what I'm talking about if you have a gift a child, right? But and at night is when they really get spend some time with themselves. So this is when it's so difficult for them to wind down. So one of the strategies can definitely be either go to bed earlier or manage um, like calming environments um, for your child to relax just before going to bed and remember what they think immediately before going to bed is whether it stays and lingers in their subconscious overnight. So definitely the other strategy is to prevent very long exposures of screens and like violent movies just before going to bed. Ah, all those things are really not having the, uh, you know, uh, desired uh, impact, right? So all those things. And, and I know once in a while watching a nice movie and being in front of your screen before going to bed is, is good for your dopamine, um, you know, levels, but um, definitely doesn't really help um, winding down. So um, the other thing I want to talk about is relaxation. So yes, uh, sleep is critical, but um, you know, so is re relaxing your n nervous system. Um, I remember being on a on a conference with my, one of my favorite favorite uh, yoga teachers, mentors, um, Rod Stryker, and he was simply stating, "I don't think right now we can bypass and neglect our nervous system." And I thought this was genius because that's what we do. You know, sleep is something so basic. We just don't care about it, we don't see the point, we don't see the enormous impact it has on us. And relaxing, you know, because we were so overwhelmed constantly by environmental factors that we don't realize, right? We, got, we go out to uh, do grocery shopping and our mirror neurons are firing back and, you know, like capting all of those energies of anxiety, uh, stress, uh, chronic stress, depression, everything we see, we see like fear around, around us. 
uh, we globally participate in the sphere around us. And so we take, we take, we take so much stress and our immune system, your nervous system is constantly under fire. So basically the stress response is your limbic system taking over, constantly sounding the alarm and constantly telling you there's a tiger in the bush as in prehistorical times. But you know, nowadays the chances for a tiger to be in the bush are very slim but our nervous system is the same. And so we're constantly looking for cues that would tell us we're in danger. And that's what the limbic system does. It just picks up every detail and shows it to you on and on and on. And you know, to aggravate your fear and to put you under alert. And it's, again, it could have been fine back in the days because our survival, depending on that um, alertness, constant alertness, but now maybe not anymore, right? And so we need to figure out ways to stop this ongoing um, sympathetic state, which is fight, flight, or freeze, constantly sounding the alarm and this limbic system constantly taking over and, and you know, uh, booking, uh, pl sending uh, this amount of cortisol in our in our bloodstream constantly. You know, this has impact on our health and our mental health right our mood regulation um, our dopamine levels you know this has an impact on everything we are and so finding ways multiple times during the day was his advice you know finding ways to just relax um, do some breath work do some meditation do some journaling uh, EFT there's so many tools out there that have always worked right they're not new we just never thought about them because we were so used to being on the stress constantly and now we're seeing that you know if we go around in circles with our stress how good this it do to us right so finding pockets of time for you to rest finding pockets of time for you to sleep finding pockets of time for you to make sense of this incredible amount of stress. And by the way, I wanna say something now, because as a parent, you are a leader. You are a leader for the, ge the next generation. You are the leader for the person you love the most in your life. And as leaders, what we wanna do is be strong and you know show that we get it together and, and all those things. And, and I understand, but time has come for a new paradigm where we could be vulnerable with our kids. We could let them know that we need a time in. And I do this all the time, like shamelessly, hey, I need five minutes to breathe right now because I'm, I'm sensing a little stress right now and I want to regulate it. And I have tools to regulate it. And by the way, by doing this, I model. I model what I'm expecting from him, you know, like having your favorite tools and using them to co-regulate and self-regulate and self-soothe. So. Why is it not okay to just say, you know, I'm also overwhelmed, I just need to take some time for me, right? It serves so many purposes, but you know, in a way we feel like we can't because how can we lead if we don't get it together? But the problem is who does master this time of global epic anxiety? Nobody, everybody is struggling right now. And you know, why should we show that we are perfect when we're not, right? We completely misaligned with ourselves. So as a parent, yes, you need to lead, but there's so much leadership in authenticity and vulnerability and setting healthy limits, setting healthy boundaries. There's so many lessons for your kiddo to be learned just watching you and you know your child is watching you. And so setting those healthy boundary, boundaries, right? Getting enough sleep, um, winding down when you need to, and not being constant fight, flight, or freeze, right? Um, emergency mode, right? Um, and so this, this is something that I really like, and I, I, I started really talking to my child about it, you know, that sleep is like self-care, uh, we owe it to ourselves, we ask so much of our bodies during the day, and you know, you, you know that if your child is an athlete, uh, like sports, and does so many things like mine, right? The physical over is for sure, <laughs> you know, but we, we need to pitch it, we need to teach that, we need to model that. 
you know, how, how we respect ourselves and we love ourselves and we deserve to rest. We deserve our seven hours or eight hours or whatever works for you. And this is what you're stepping up for yourself and you're, you know, you're deciding, you're committing to and you're defending uh, as a firm boundary. And this is really such a great life lesson uh, you're teaching your child. Um, and I'm so excited for that. I'm so excited for you. Um, and uh, yes, um, executive functioning can be enhanced. And we have so many strategy, uh, strategies that we can put in place. But rest is a major, powerful, untapped, most best kept secret, you know, type of deal. Um, and we, we have control over it. We don't have control over everything in life, especially not now as we find that the world is not as safe as we thought it was. You know, the things we worked for decades, you know, are, are just out the window now. And so it can be very difficult, but some things we have control over. And what I'm inviting you to do is to take control over those things. Um, you have control over, um, you know, the way you coach your child about uh, around those topics, right? Um, you can explain. There's so many good videos and, you know, talk about how the brain works and, you know, um, your prefrontal cortex uh, rests. Um, it can be in control, you know, and you could plan and stay on task and regulate your emotions. There's so many, so many good things to be talked about if we, if we dare to go there. And that's my wish for you. I hope you liked this one. Please share the video and, and um, uh, comment below and sign up for our newsletter and subscribe to our channel so you can learn more at your fingertips. Thank you so much. We'll speak to you very soon.